Hello and welcome, I'm Philly May and our purple fluffy friend is the Fluff. This is my first YouTube video so sorry if the filming um, is a little messy, I'm still learning, I do hope you stick it out to the end. Today I'm doing some upcycling, I've got these really nice screw lid pots which are just from a weaving hair mask by Garnier. I'm not sponsored being a brand new channel. I will leave links in the description for anyone who is interested in purchasing anything that I've used in this video. To start our crafting off, I have washed out the pot and sanded the outside of the pot. <laughs> Do wear a mask whenever you sand anything. You don't want all those particles in your lungs. The sanding is just to create a rough surface, so you don't need to go too deep with the sanding, you don't need too invasive sandpaper, a fine or medium one will do. This is just to help the paint stick onto the smooth plastic. I'm going to go in with some gesso, which I've bought from the works. Uh, I'm in the UK, so I'm not sure how far out the works branches, but there will be a link in the description, as I've said before. Gesso is just going to create a nice pale ground, which is necessary for the lid of the pot, which is a gorgeous turquoise shade, but we're not going to have turquoise by the end. Once the gesso is done, I sketched out what I wanted to do, which is smart, but what I've done is a bit of a brain fart as well. I'm now painting in the background, which I wanted a deep green to make a nice jungle atmosphere. However, as you can see, I'm going around with a tiny paintbrush all the outlines I've drawn. This is the base coat, which always looks messy. However, there's so many different strokes. There's all these different directions, which is great for texturing in the right sort of work, but not for this piece. In the end, I've got a bigger paintbrush. I'm going over the entire thing, my outlines and all to create a nice smooth background to work on. Re-outline my design. On the lid I'm going for some palm leaf to look as if you're looking down on the palm leaves or possibly you're standing under them looking up. And I'm colour them using Thule Art acrylic paint pens which I bought off Amazon. I haven't used Pasca before, these are the only ones I've ever used. I do have some issues now and then but I think it's quite common issues for any acrylic paint pen so nothing to really make them any lesser of a brand than Pasca or anyone else. I've gone with two shades of green for this to create some depth and separation between the leaves just to make it look a bit more visually interesting so you've got layers to the piece. To the base, got the main body of it but around the rim we've got some more leaves that are coming down over the seam. The acrylic paint pens took about two three layers. add a pop of colour, we are going to add on some flamingos. I started colouring in the flamingos with again a Tulia acrylic paint pen in a fine nib with a dusty pink. I thought it made a nice calmness to the deep greens of the jungle. However, I was really struggling with this paint pen. I did remove the nib, wash it out, I even tried putting a new nib in it and it just did not want to work. I have this problem mainly with the fine nib pens I found, they just, some of them just don't want to work. So I ended up going for the next shade darker from the colour I originally wanted. At the time I was really upset about it. However, it's really not made any difference and I like the colour that it ended up being anyway. <laughs> it makes the flamingos stand out a bit more as well as matches the shades of the green a bit better. I was going to leave the base of the pot blank but I've also ended up doing a flamingo where there was an indent. Not that you can see much because my hand is in the way, like I'm not going to get it out of the way, I'm coming 
out to the camera angles, I'm very sorry. Once the flamingos, palm leaves and background are all done, I'm going around the framing of the pot which I've left myself and was there anyway. <laughs> I'm going around the framing of the pot with a gold colour. I am using an acrylic paint pen again, though I do have gold in a tube, acrylic paint tube. However, I want to connect the frame with the illustrations by outlining them. So I needed to use the fine nib gold to do that, to make sure it was nice and neat. My acrylic paint tube and the paint pen in the gold are slightly different shades of gold. Probably wouldn't be able to see it on the camera, but I'm going to be able to see it and I didn't want to mess up this entire project so I was so happy with how it was going. So I decided to just use the poor paint pen over these massive sections of the top, over these massive sections of the pot. It does all blend in well though and I'm glad I done it. I did make a few smudges while I was doing the outline where my hands knocked the wet paint. So at the end I just went over those sections with the original leaf I did find sometimes it made it a little patchy and they're not really as noticeable once I'm all pushed. illustrations and going around the base of the pot where I've moved my washi tape from blocking the background in the flamingo base up to now reveal what was covered before so I can colour in the gold base with a neat line there. tape just seemed like it needed its own moment. <laughs> With the paintwork all done, I'm going over the entire thing in a Mod Podge, again brought forth in the works. It's supposed to be a matte finish, however I find it's got more of a glossy coating. For me I didn't really mind this, but if you got a project where you particularly want a matte finish, this isn't going to be the pro product for you. For me I find it's no issue at all. It made the gold just shine that bit more even and make everything look a bit more battery done but my illustration is neat enough for that <laughs> minutes for you and hours of painting after work for me the pot is done i'm really pleased with it i haven't done before and i'm really pleased with the outcome i think the gold just brings everything together and makes it look really elegant. I like the touch of the flamingos which I wasn't originally going to do but I like the pop of pink colour there to just bring everything into a new level. It's elegant and it's definitely something I'm displaying in my room now. I do really like the logo on the bottom of it. I don't know, it makes me feel like it's some sort of brand or something like the Flamingo Jungle brand. <laughs> if I do see you again then I look forward to it. Until next time, Billy May and Fluff.